everyone from around the world. This is Ramon Granados with a new interview with Hemp Engineering. Today we have the great pleasure of having with us uh, Mrs. Nicole Johnson, right? Did I say that right? <laughs> it's, it's Nicola, but that's okay. Nicola, yes. It sounds very Italian, Nicola, yes. It, I think it is, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Nicola is um, a candidate for the um, legalized cannabis in Western Australia. This is um, a great honor having you with us. You being a lady, very young, and tell us about yourself. How did you end up in the cannabis universe? Well, first of all, thank you for, for um, speaking to me today. Um, as you mentioned, my name's Nicola. I've uh, been uh, in, an activist with cannabis probably for a good 10 to 15 years. Um, when my partner passed away uh, in 2019, I um, got actually into cannabis via a advertisement uh, through the now president, uh, Leo Trezor. Um, and then since uh, um, we went through a state election, I ran number two um, and the person who ran uh, number one, Sophia Mormon to me, uh, she was elected. So I then became a uh, Sophia staffer. So I'm also on the parliament side of things as well as the, uh, the political party. So this is fantastic because we need, we need to, really, um, I just want to say this correctly. It is cheaper to vote them out the current parliament than educate them. They simply do not want to help. And if they could have, we could have, the laws would have changed a long time ago. They're not interested. So we need hundreds of people like you to rise uh, the emotional uh, part of the population and bring them over because this is, we are in the middle of a revolution, of a green revolution. And like if we follow the example of the United States where they just have funded over $1 trillion to support uh, green projects, we are definitely going to get behind if we don't get voices such as yourself in the parliament. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell um, us about your plan. What, 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 what are you after? Uh, well, obviously the uh, legalization of cannabis, of course, and, and more um, or less restrictions, sorry, around the hemp industry. Uh, the hemp industry in Western Australia is, especially just in the South region, is booming. Uh, there's a huge amount of uh, money to be made out of it for the government. Um, and we, we're trying to legalize it and regulate it. So um, that there's, yeah, it's, uh, it's bringing money in through the economy. So um, yeah. we've, got, uh, we've got ideas as well for uh, hemp filtration systems and in industrial, um, industrial areas. So we, go, we can look at being uh, emission free. Um, and there's all sorts of avenues that, that we're looking at. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, the way that we are uh, situated in parliament, in the state parliament in WA, we ha we have a majority a government, which means it doesn't matter what we put to the table, they won't do it. It's that simple. And with them having so many, there is, there's, there's not much we can do. With me running candidate for federal, um, and if, if we can get uh, not even WA, but at least one state um, represented by the national party, then we will have more of a footstep to be able to start um, pushing from a higher level, so. Yes, I, I do agree with you that the cannabis issue is just a political issue. Yes, um, definitely. While we keep this government where it is, there's not gonna be change. Um, no. And Australia is getting behind really fast with compared with other countries. Uh, but definitely. there is hope, Nicola, there is hope because when you compare our laws, with other countries, um, especially Western Australia, we have um, segregated what, what marijuana is and what, and what hemp, industrial hemp is, which is fine. Um, of course, there is a lot of things that we need to do in the industrial hemp space, which is the one that I'm more supportive. Um, it, I'm not saying that I don't support the marijuana, <laughs> marijuana side, you know, um, but I'm Latino. So uh, Mexico allows to anybody to grow up to six plants in their home, 
without any hesitation, the government understand that it doesn't matter how much a corporation wants to control the business, they cannot control the plant and they have to give freedom to the people because not everybody's have to grow. And in Colombia, people can grow up to 20 plants in their homes. 20 yeah. plants. That's, <laughs> yeah, That's here, massive, yeah. Yeah, and here in Perth, the police, for any reason, catch you with a joint, and then your life is screwed up. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's anachronic. It's, uh, it's out of the question. Yes. It is. It is. It's out of control. Um, and, and this is what we found within the last 12 months of doing uh, public research. Uh, uh, of 80% of the police officers that we spoke to have all agreed. They do not agree with the cannabis prohibition. Um, every person you speak to, they're either uh, pro-cannabis or they don't mind whether it is uh, legalized or not. And, and obviously, um, there's a bit of a belief that hemp is actually already legal here, but even though it is, there's a lot of restrictions around this and what yes. part of the hemp plant can be used and, and all of that. So that's obviously something that uh, we'd, we'd uh, be uh, pushing to lift. Um, but yeah, we can, um, with, with all the people in the public, public that we spoke to, I don't understand how there is reason for the government to be able to still uh, keep this prohibition, especially with it being 100 years old as well. So um, it, well, it is time. Uh, Nicola, the prohibition is a business for a lot of people but particularly for the government. So as an engineer, I, it is very easy to, it is very easy to prove mathematically speaking that those who support the prohibition are making benefit of it. So there is no question about that. So it yeah. doesn't matter what we say, it doesn't matter how we put it, unless we vote it out, the prohibition will remain in place. That's correct. Right. <laughs> so now talking about the prohibition, uh, Tell us also about your experience with it, with the prohibition. Uh, what, what do you mean by experience with it? Like um, in, in parliament and while I've been on- uh, with Life, the life. Your life? Life, um, I, um, all right. So, okay, so I, and so honestly, I, I am, a, as I've mentioned to before, I'm a huge activist for cannabis. Um, I tend to have a lot of, a thought process that just, continues and never stops. And I find that, that cannabis does help uh, that thought process to stop for me. So uh, me personally, um, I, um, I'm an activist for it. Uh, again, like you, like you mentioned before, smoking a joint, you can you know, get a couple of thousand dollar fine for. Uh, so it's uh, something that I usually, yeah, keep to myself, so. <laughs> so we're family on that regards. <laughs> 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 Look, um, Very yes, similar, yeah. it's, um, it is it is uh, a complicated issue for everyone, um, but uh, times are changing. Times are changing very radically for everyone around the world. What it was morally unacceptable, now it is common. Um, and I guess this is one of your motivations to run for as a candidate, I guess, no? Yes, yes. correct. Um, yeah, like, like and you mentioned it before, we are falling behind the rest of the world. Um, and it, there's, there's no other, they, yeah, they've got to look at it and they've got to start um, being serious um, about moving forward with it. Because if it's not going to happen now, it's going to have to be addressed at one point or another quite soon. Yes. You mentioned yesterday a while ago, um, I forgot you said that, <clears throat> that uh, in the industrial hemp is kind of weird that, that our farmers grow, that they cannot touch the leaf. Yes. Um, they cannot touch the flower. They cannot, you know, it's very limited when, when we should have, we should allow our farmers to grow and process what it needs to be processed so they can become richer and we can make an impact in the industry. Uh, it is my thinking that uh, in, uh, Western Australia can become a hub uh, in the world. Techno technologically speaking, we have one of the best universities in, the, in this part of, the, of this time zone. Um, there are hundreds of technologies available that we could potentially export to uh, our neighbors 
that they are in need to, to satisfy their requirements. And the quality that we seal our products in Australia is the best marketing, you know, that there is no competition in that regard. So the government is actually losing money on, on by this kind of provision, which is from absolutely full. There is not. So that's why I'm doing this um, support to candidates such as yourself, because it's not just about educating, it's about uh, 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 getting the awareness to the people that time has changed and we, do, we need to embrace what it needs to be embraced. Hemp is the solution for everything. It think. definitely is. It, it, it definitely, definitely is. And, and like you said, there's a huge industry, and that's whether it's you're going into material or clothing for hem, where with hemp, or you are going down a, a like an, a, a green emission track, um, and then you've also got your oils, your foods, your uh, seeds, your um, your farm feed. Uh, there's there's so many different uses of hemp, and the fact that it is still restricted, but also really unusually legal as well it, it just complicates the whole process um and and they definitely are missing out 100 percent on on so much benefit and across so many different boards as well so once you are elected what are your plans in the parliament oh well i obviously start uh federal's a little bit different to state so i'd have to stuff it out first um but yeah i've got got a few plans uh or a few, a few avenues that we could track track down. Um, but yeah, obviously I have to see if I get there first to see if they are possible tracks to be able to take. Um, we have over, if I recall well, um, the right number, over 30,000 homeless in Perth, in Western Australia. It would require just about 10,000 hectares to build homes for them, made out of him. Technology exists, we have, all everything that is needed to do so. Um, is there any plans within the legalized party, legalized cannabis party to address that problem? So obviously being a one one issue party, um, we, we don't uh, set out under different scopes. However, um, the all the, the executives of, of the state parties and the federal parties are quite uh, open to candidates or MPs. Um, be free of heart kind of thing. So um, yeah, and and also when when these matters do come up in Parliament, um, as Sophia and Brian, for, as, for example, in the state Parliament, they um, they have a lot of input and stuff like that. They can ask questions around it, uh, and that is also something we can we can raise in in federal. But you do make some good points there as well because uh, Hemp Creek, which is pretty much in Southwest Australia, um, is is such a yeah, it's such a, a cheap product. It's it's green. It's it's everything, and and that is something that that they could use uh, as as an aid um, to to fix the, uh, the homeless problem. Well, uh, the war is going into the into that direction. Um, uh, by using him, we don't need to cut trees anymore. We don't need to to mine uh, for any other. Uh, materials, but moreover and more important, we don't need to excavate for sand, which is, you know, it's finishing. So um, everywhere on earth. So definitely hemp creek is the way to go and hemp as a solution for everything. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> this is very good, and uh, Nicola, Diane, I see in your eyes that you are very convinced of what you're talking and I see a very nice future on politics for you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So it's, it's been a bit, um, yeah, it's been quite a bit of a uh, journey that I've learned a lot, a lot on and I'm looking forward to everything going forward. Should be good. So what would you tell the decision makers on regards of what your journey? Oh, if, if it was up to me, I'd probably, Take them right back to the start, start of where the prohibition started. Um, I personally believe it it it, um, it originates around uh, racial and derogatory origin, uh, sorry origins, and um, and if we can take it back and 
go from the start, we may be able to get a few a few other uh, members of the government to go, oh, hang on a second. Uh, just the same way as I did, a lot the same way as a lot of other people um, became pro cannabis as well. Um, I think it, I think it, a lot of it is that um, they don't they don't have sort of background knowledge. Um, they sort of come into it and go, oh, it's prohibition, it's it's wrong, uh, without looking into the past. However, within saying that, we have also had quite a few members, um, and and this is why it is such an exciting time. It's quite a few members in the past and in the present who have been trying to put through cannabis bills. We now have an interest in Australia now with the Greens, they're looking at a legalized bill um, and also the One Nation, they're looking at a legalized bill. And I'm pretty sure Clive Palmer hasn't shut down a uh, or hasn't uh, completely denied a cannabis bill either. Um, so with more parties coming out now, it's only going to uh, normalize, which hopefully would, would aid to the um, decision makers to do it. It's time. Yeah, it's time. It's time. Um, one of my perception is that <clears throat> uh, we are in a society that is mostly alcoholic. Okay, which is a drama in young people and old people and every and everywhere. You just yes. need to go to Northbridge and at, at, at midnight, and you're gonna see exactly what I'm saying. So. Um, Changing that perspective, changing that mindset is, is a challenge itself. Because it, drunkers it, that, will yeah. never accept a stoner, ever. That's right. Um, I've, I've always been a personal believer that uh, people with uh, licensed venues that are licensed to uh, provide alcohol to patrons, they, they should um, be licensed to also sell cannabis. The same way that they sell, sell alcohol, it's regulated to 18 year olds only. Uh, you've got to show your license, obviously, to be able to, to prove that you're old enough. Um, and, and that should be a, offered as purely as a safer alternative to alcohol. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've, at my local, a few years ago, I would, I'd go there and I'd walk across the road have a joint and get kicked out for having one, not even on the property, but then you'd sit there and watch time after time, um, the, the barmaid sell drink after drink after drink to the same locals that they know that they know are going to get into their cars and drive on all the main roads. And, and that was okay. So I, 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 I'm not a fan of alcohol. I don't drink. Obviously, I'm not going to fight it uh, against anybody. Um, but I do think something needs to be viewed in the, um, in, in the spectrum of alcohol because cannabis is, is a far safer alternative. To alcohol. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, you get three drunkards, they start a fight. You get three stoners, we start a party. <laughs> exactly right. Or just eat one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nicola, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. I wish I can catch up again very soon uh, after, you're, after you have been elected. Um, <laughs> yes. And I. That's where your energy should be focusing. My advice to you, um, uh, when I was in Venezuela, long, long time ago, uh, we had a status quo as strong as the status quo in Australia. Yeah. It was, um, you just thinking that you were going to do a change, it was, uh, you were considered a crazy man. Yes. So we started going door by door in a, in a long campaign, a strategic campaign. And in three years, we voted out. In Mexico happened the same thing just four years ago. They followed the Venezuelan example. There is no way in democracy to win uh, the vote of the people unless you touch, you knock on the door of the, of the people. I know it's very tiring. I know it's very uh, time consuming, but that's the only way that I believe it can be done. It's Internet one -on -one. and the social media helps, don't get me wrong, but it's never the same when you go and touch the hands of the people. Um, I, I think your writing also gives you that one-on-one -on -one contact with people as well, and that, so they know sort of who, who you know, they're voting for. And, and yeah, I think that's a really good idea. 
Yes, and especially in, <clears throat> in democracies where people have lost the faith because most people believe that the instrument to do the change is impossible to achieve or is, or is corrupt, but it's not true. When I tell you, honestly, I, when I go here for, to vote, it's so it's transparent, so smooth, of, of course. And there is a down part that uh, like, the, like in the ex-Soviet Union, Lenin used to say, let, vote the people, let the people vote and we count. And that's basically the Australian style. But and yet, when you get the critical mass of the population to vote, to invite them to vote, to resonate with your message, I am sure, Nicola, that we can do this and more. It is a matter of that the politicians, now that you're a politician or a candidate, <laughs> <that one. laughs> you gotta go door by door. Door by door, my friend, there is not any other way. That's my advice. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. That's, that's really good advice. And I agree with you too. Thank you very much for your time. I wish you all the best because the best for you is the best for everyone. Excellent. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for your time too. And it's been, uh, it's been great meeting you and talking to you. I hate to talk again. Love and peace for you. You too. See you later. Ciao. Bye. Bye.